question number 141 kulbushan and sons has entered into a contract to supply two consignments of certain taxable goods however since it is unable to determine the value of the goods to be supplied by it applies for payment of tax on such goods on a provisional basis along with the required documents in support of its request okay on 12 1 the assistant commissioner central issues an order allowing a payment of tax on provisional basis indicating the value on the basis of which the assessment is allowed on provisional basis and the amount is to be executed and security is to be furnished so what is the date of provisional assessment order 12 1 12 1 is the date of provisional assessment Kulbushan and Sons complies with the same and supplies both the consignments on 25-1, thereafter paying the tax on provisional basis in respect of the consignments on 19-2. So actually 12-1 they got a provisional assessment order, thereafter they are making supply. So supply is made in the month of January. So January means what is the due date of payment of GST? So it is 20th of February. So by 20th of February they are paying the tax on provisional basis. Assessment order passed by the Assistant Commissioner of Central Tax on 21-3, a tax of 1,80,000 becomes due on the first consignment, whereas a tax of 4,20,000 becomes refundable on the second consignment. So, with respect to first consignment, 1,80,000 becomes due, whereas 4,20,000 second consignment becomes refundable. Now, what is the date on which final assessment is done? 21-3. Now, Kulbushan and Sons pays the tax due on first consignment on 9-4 and applies for the refund of tax on the second consignment the same day. So, 1,80,000 becomes due on the first consignment whereas the tax of 4,20,000 become refundable on second consignment. Now, Kulbushan and Sons pays the tax due on first consignment on 9-4 and applies for the refund of tax on the second consignment the same day. Now, so with respect to first consignment, they are making the payment. What is the shortfall? Shortfall is 1,80,000. So on this 1,80,000, interest is payable at what rate? 18% per annum from when? From the first date after due date till the date of payment. What is the due date? So due date is 20th February. So, 21st February onwards you need to count. So, in February 8 days and in March 31 days and in April 9 days, 48 days. For 48 days on 1,80,000 we need to pay interest. So, 1,80,000 into 18% into 48 divided by 365, 4,261 rounded off will be taken as the interest payable. Whereas, in respect of the second consignment, so we are eligible for a refund. First, we need to make an application. What is the date on which we are making application? Same day that is 9-4. Now, 60 days is the statutory time limit for granting the refund. So, now you need to count 60 days from 9-4. So, in April 30 days, 30 minus 9, 21 days in April. Then May, it will be 31 days, so 52 days. And uh, 60 days means in June 8th. So, 8th June, 8th June is the 60th day. And by 5, 5th June itself they are giving. So, no interest on refund. No interest on refund because 8th June is the 60th day. By 60th day from the date of application if they are giving refund. Then in that case no need to pay any interest. So, in this case interest shall not arise. So, on 5-6 the refund we got, so no interest on refund because the payment is made on time. Suppose if there is any delay in giving that beyond 60 days, for example, in this case, say on 30th June they have given. Now, by 8th June 60th day is over. Now, what is the number of days remaining days? 22 days. For the 22 days, we need to compute interest at the rate of 6% per annum on 4,20,000. Okay. So, therefore, for that 60 days, no interest. On expiry of 60 days, if the refund is not granted, then only interest will come into the picture. So, mainly this is the question for computation of interest under provisional assessment. Okay.